CGI programs are uh, programs that run on a web server which use HTML web pages as a GUI front end and a CGI script uh, in the language of your choice as the brains of the program. Um, and to understand how this works, it helps to have a little perspective um, about all the different ways that you can sort of interface with, um, with uh, uh, an interpreter or a programming language on a computer. Uh, you've seen this type um, of command line program before. This is a little program that uh, puts up a menu as an interface. It just prints some lines right to the blank rebel interpreter screen um, and waits for the user to enter their choice and then it does something with that choice um, and it clears the screen again and does the same thing. Um, so we have a little forever loop that prints blank screen, prints the little menu, um, asks the user a question and does something with that answer. Um, if that answer is four, it prints goodbye, and otherwise it uh, um, loops that number of times and prints rebel is great, and then uh, tells you the container and goes on. So the key there is that's called a command line program. That just uses text in the uh, in the Rebel interpreter as um, uh, the interface for the program. You don't need any graphics, you just use text to ask the user uh, menu options and so forth. Um, the next type of application is a GUI application, which you've seen a number of times. Uh, this uses Rebel's view layout and puts up some GUI items. Um, for example, in this case, it uh, puts up a little, little message to the user and asks how many times it should be uh, displayed and then we uh, choose, we have a choice button here, let's just choose between 1, 2, and 3 um, and it loops that number of times that was great, that was great, that was great and we can do it again if we'd like every time that widget is clicked on it runs the code. So that's another desktop kind of application that's made to run on uh, a single user's computer um, and it uh, uh, is a typical way that most people are familiar with working with desktop applications, single user applications. Um, on the web though, we m more often are familiar with using um, forms. And so th what the web browser is in this case is essentially a GUI uh, system and we use HTML. This is some HTML code. Um, we got this up at uh, forward slash rebel forward slash uh, demo HTML and this code right here um, is just standard HTML court code it's got a title on top this is data entry form it's got an action which is the key this sends whatever data we put in this form there's a little form here um, that has an input type a text input type 25 characters long, and then a submit button. Uh, that's typical HTML, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, displayed in a browser. You put that on your web server, you save it to your web server, and that acts sort of as the GUI front end to a program. It sends the data. Here's our little text form. Um, we can enter a number of times that we want the uh, message to be displayed. When we press submit, that action code or that action script is run using the data that's been submitted. So here on the on the uh, website you can see that once that button's been submitted it goes to a different uh, bit of code and that bit of code is at a different website. So back here we're at uh, rebel.org or rebel, uh, uh, rebel uh, directory on the server. And again that was demo.html. That's an HTML file. And uh, we type in again, if we type a different number, if we went 23 times and submitted, it goes to that program, and this time it does it 23 times. So here we've got some HTML. In one file, it points using a form action to a script, a bit of rebel code that's on the server, and that script contains standard rebel code and what it does is it prints out a little bit more HTML that's displayed to the user with the page title. Um, it gets 
the information that was sent to it using this little line right here, and then it does something with that information. At this, uh, at this point, we're gonna it's gonna take that number of times it was submitted to it, convert it to an integer, and loop this bit of code. And print rebel is great that many times, and then it, that closes the code. We're gonna cover the HTML and how that works a little, a little bit more, but that's the basic structure for a CGI program. We get a GUI front end, which is just a form usually. Uh, some form that appears on the web page, and you can have drop down boxes, you can have text fields, you can have any other way that uh, HTML forms will let you submit information. You have an action, which is a bit of code which does something with the information that's been submitted on that page. Um, and just to clarify again, there are a couple basic types. We um, have the command line. Text type of interface. You just print text to the screen. Uh, you have the GUI layout. That's another desktop type of application. For those two types of applications, you typically, uh, you know, would compile or otherwise package up. In the case of Rebel, you use XPacker to package up um, uh, an executable and distribute it to people, and they run it on their own. That could connect to a uh, a web-based uh, or network-based uh, data. Repository. Um, that's not uh, so uncommon for uh, multi-user games and other peer-to-peer -peer types of applications. You will see uh, business applications, for example, that are multi-user. Each user in a, in a company may get a copy of the application. That application connects across to a network uh, to a single uh, database or data repository that's accessible on the network or on the internet. Um, but when you're working online, you don't want the users to have to download a program just to uh, uh, send some information. Most users are familiar with uh, database queries, custom database queries to get information. For example, if you went to movie website, you wouldn't want the user to have to download your program just to do a search. What CGI enables is things like custom web page searches and specialized email forms and um, any sort of data access and dynamic interaction with the user that uh, would otherwise require a program. And it uses the HTML pages as the input, and it uses the scripts that reside on the server as the, the code that does something with that and returns um, information somehow to the, uh, to the user based on their input. And Rebel's built-in CGI interface enables this very easily. Um, other languages that you'll see, Perl, ASP, Python, uh, PHP is another language that's not quite used as a CGI, but it's another language that you'll see used for uh, creating web pages that interact dynamically with users. But you don't need to use any of those languages uh, if you know Rebel. Uh, you just need to learn how to use its CGI interface. And to do that, um, getting into the real depths of CGI program is a little beyond this tutorial, but uh, we're going to do a crash course here in HTML. You need to learn how to use HTML if you want to program CGI applications because you need to create forms that send the information to your um, online scripts. And the way HTML works is it's uh, basically a collection of tags. Uh, you see these starting and ending tags in pointy brackets. And you surround the uh, information that you want to do something with on the web page with a starting bracket and then an ending bracket that has a forward uh, forward facing slash in it and HTML isn't really a programming language all it, all these tags do is they allow you to shape the visual appearance and layout of uh, any information on the page so for example one of the types of tags you'll see in HTML is a bolding tag and you have a, a tag that has the word strong in it that will start the text after it being bolded and you have an ending tag strong with a little forward slash and that will end the text from being bolded